A few weeks ago, I did a video highlighting the cheapest PC setup that an artist can build that also doesn't suck. And a lot of you said, cool, but what if we want to upgrade that? What if we want to jump up a couple steps? What would I recommend? What would I add to that setup? And what would I not bother upgrading? So that's what we're doing today. This is the best bang for your buck video. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link that down below in the description. We ended up only spending $330 for our whole setup. We're talking PC, uh, drawing tablet, and a mouse keyboard combo. So as I go through this, I'm going to be listing a lot of products. And if you want to figure out specifically which ones I am talking about, I will link them down below in the description so you can find them all there. Before I jump into the next section, I want to quickly shout out my website, bradsartschool.com, where I have some of my courses like Learn How to Draw in 60 Days, where every day you get a lesson and you get homework for that lesson. So you can do activities to learn the basics of art training. It's really designed for beginners, people who want to learn the basics of art and then take those skills and apply them to other people's tutorials, more advanced drawing tutorials down the road. Brad's artschool.com if you want to learn more. And I was genuinely impressed by how well it worked for art, but we did make a couple compromises here and there. First up, we went with this little B-Link mini PC computer and this XP Pen Artist 10 tablet. While the RAM and the storage in that PC were good and the processor got by, for a little bit more, we can do much, much better. And the drawing tablet, while serviceable, was only a little 10 inch screen. And that's kind of small. It doesn't give us a lot of drawing real estate. It's also not great for tasks like Blender, 3D rendering, or gaming, or a lot of those PC tasks that you might want to do outside of just illustration. So I think we could do much, much better by just taking a little step up. So let's start by looking at the PC first. So step one, I decided to upgrade to this. I picked up this mini forum PC. Now this thing has an AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a full terabyte of storage. Now this little PC costs over $400. The last one we had was only like $170. So the, we are more than doubling the price here. And it's not just the more RAM and the storage you're getting. The main thing that we're upgrading here is this processor. And this is a huge step up. I try not to rely too heavily on benchmarks around here. I like the user experience. What is it actually like to use this processor instead of just looking at the numbers the processors can do in a perfect environment. And this is the Intel N100 processor that was in the last computer. We have a multi-thread score of 5,495 and a single thread score of 1,946. If that means nothing to you, no worries. All you have to know is number go up equals good. So we go from that over to 24,000 threads. It's almost five times more and we're almost doubling the single thread performance of that processor. And what this really means is that you're getting a processor that's going to be able to do a lot more, even if you're not doing anything demanding. That also means it's going to last a whole lot longer. Now this Ryzen 9 processor is a little bit older. This isn't the most recent generation processor. That's part of the reason why it's cheaper. Uh, Ryzen likes to number their processors. It's a little bit confusing, but their numbering process goes like this. Five is good, seven is better, nine is their best. This is a Ryzen 9. Now the ports and things like that you're gonna get in this computer are a little bit better too. Around the front with the power button, we also have two USB type C ports and we also have a headphone jack. Along the back, we have a power port, we have the LAN port, we have two USB type C ports, two HDMI ports, and another two USB type A port. Now one thing you're gonna notice about this PC compared to the last one is it's a little bit thicker. And when we look at the bottom, it's probably hard to see on camera. There's two little laptop fans in there. That is something I noticed as well. The last one ran kind of cold and it didn't really need to dissipate a lot of heat. This one's running a lot harder and you are going to hear the fans. They don't get too loud unless you're playing like a hardcore game and doing stuff for a while, uh, but you will hear the fans running when you're just doing pretty much anything. The fan noise is louder than like say a desktop computer, but it is quieter than a laptop computer. It kind of falls in between there. The other little quirk about this that only really might affect me is that the two ports on the front are USB type C. I like USB type C ports, but my keyboard mouse combo has a USB type 
a dongle. I can plug that in the back and that's fine. But what I find sometimes with some of these is that if your little dongle that you plug in is not directly inside of your keyboard and your mouse, sometimes your mouse can get a little flaky or it'll drop a letter when you're typing every so often and that's kind of annoying. So I ended up turning this thing sideways so that my mouse and keyboard could see it better. Now for drawing illustration, of course this handles everything phenomenal. You can run all the Adobe apps, you could run Krita, you can run Clip Studio Paint, you can run anything on this thing. In fact, even when I was using Blender, it was running pretty well. It was very easy to build a model in Blender. Now, in terms of rendering, I was doing a rendering test and a review I did the other day. This really isn't built for rendering. It's gonna take a good long time to kind of run through these kind of render tests. If you only need to render one image, you're gonna be fine. It's only gonna take a few seconds more. If you're gonna to try to render any kind of animation or anything like that, you're gonna want it's a, a, your own GPU to do that. What really surprised me here is how well it performed with games. Now that N100 processor in the last video I did, it did better than I thought. It could do like Super Nintendo emulation. It could run, you know, older 3D games that are like 10 years old, I think I was running Borderlands 2 and it ran fine. Here, I'm running newer games. I'm running Ghost of Tsushima here. It runs pretty darn well. The settings aren't set particularly high, but I'm easily clearing 30 frames. Obviously, if you're a gamer and you're trying to get up to like 60 frames or higher per second, that's nothing, that's not that impressive. But considering what this computer is and how small it is, it was doing better than I expected it to. So can it game? Kind of, if you're running like less powerful games, this thing is gonna be able to handle that just fine. Now, the last time I was using the XP Pen Artist 10, which was selling on Amazon for like only $135, which is a great deal, but you are compromising on that screen. The overall color doesn't look as good. You don't have great viewing angles on it. You know, all those things, it's an inexpensive screen. I mean, it's good for what it is. It's good for the price, but what if you wanna go up to the next level? I really like 16 inch tablets. So I'm gonna throw out here the Canvas, the Huion Canvas Pro 6. Currently, it's listed for $300. This is the older version of this tablet. But even though it's older, the pen is just as good as the pens in the new ones. And that's kind of what counts here. The screen still does look really good. It is only a 1080p screen. The newer version of this tablet costs almost twice as much, but it's a big upgrade. You've got a 2.5K display. So when you're hovering over it and you get up close, you can't really see any pixels. Like I said, that is a big jump in price. You know, that's doubling the price. You're you're still getting that size. You're getting a really nice product. But if you're a little bit more price conscious, 16 inch tablet gives you plenty of drawing space and a lot to work with there. So that's kind of that sweet spot that I would recommend as far as bang for your buck. Huion also makes a 4K version of this, which is going for $900. So if you want to go crazy nuts, that's there too. So that's what I'd recommend because that's going to come in around $700 and you get your full setup. So you're, you're actually more than doubling the price of that $330 that we spent last time, but you're getting a lot more. As far as upgrade, if you wanted to go higher, if you wanted to go even even better than that, where would you go? Well, initially, this video was gonna be a little bit different. After my first video, I said I was gonna do this video and Geekom reached out to me, they make mini PCs, and they said, we have the perfect PC for you. And I actually did a full review of that last week. I'll link that down below in the description. It was the Geeko Mega Mini G1, I think. It was a fantastic little computer, has an RTX 4060 in it, but I decided not to use it for this video, specifically because this is really a bang for your buck video. And while I really liked that PC, it's starting at $1,700. And I think we can do way better with kind of similar specs. So that's what we're gonna do. Because when we're really talking about bang for your buck and we're talking about PCs, the best way to get the most value for your money is actually to build your own, even if that is a bit intimidating. This is totally my opinion showing because I have built a few PCs and I really love it. It's a lot of fun. Someone once described it to me in a comment of one of my videos as Legos for adults and I completely agree. It's like assembling a Lego set, a really, really expensive Lego set. You could also go with a more inexpensive laptop, try to find something with a similar processor to what we talked about in that mini PC, and also something with 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. So the real question is, how far under that $1,700 can we get if we built our own PC? So let's start out with the processor. We're gonna be going AMD, even though the Mega Mini uses Intel because Intel has some problems with their latest generation of chips. They're just not aging that gracefully. Here, I'm going with the Ryzen 5 7600 X. Now this thing is coming in a little under $200. Now I mentioned before, 
the naming convention here is that Ryzen starts with fives, go to sevens, go to nines. This is a five. This is the low end. In our mini PC, we just had it had a nine. That's so much better, right? Well, let's go to our benchmarks and check it out. So this is that Ryzen nine that we were looking at earlier. We're talking about 24,000 multi-core uh, thread score, 3,400 single core. Let's go to the five and we go from 3,500 to 4,100 and our multi-thread rating is going up a little bit as well. This processor's actually a little better partially because it's newer but also and this is pretty important too this ryzen 5 is a desktop processor whereas the other one we were looking at is really built for mini pcs and laptops you're just going to get more performance out of a desktop processor you could go with the 7 that's probably going to cost you like 70 80 ish dollars more so that's something to keep in mind you are going to get more performance that way if you wanted to do that the next thing you need in a pc build is a motherboard this is where everything connects you put your storage on there your processor on there your ram on there everything connects to this thing and so i'm looking at this little gigabyte board here for a hundred and $30. It's nothing fancy, but it, it gets the job done. We also need a cooler. I'm just getting a simple cooler here. What this is, is it's a fan that goes on top of our processor that's going to blow air uh, through a vent, which is going to cool that processor off. This thing is only $18. You can go way fancier and way higher end on this, but for now, this will do for our smaller process. If you were to opt for a higher end processor, you'd probably want to get a, a bigger fan to go with it. You also might have to invest in a tube of thermal paste with this. A lot of these come with thermal paste already. Some do not. It's kind of hit or miss. That's the goop you put on the top of the chip before you put the fan on top of it. That mini PC had a terabyte of storage, so we're putting in a terabyte of storage here. This is another $57. We need 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm getting two sticks of this T-Create Classic. Your computer needs a power supply. What this means is that every component in your computer requires some level of energy. The more stuff, the more powerful the processor and the GPU and that sort of thing, the more watts you have to put into your computer. This is an area where I'm going a little bit more expensive. And the reason why is because unlike the rest of the components in your computer, whether we're talking about the processor, the GPU, the RAM, all these things that you may upgrade down the road, if you get a nice power supply now, spend a little more on that now, this thing isn't just gonna last for this computer, but you're probably gonna be able to use it again in your next computer. Or if you wanna to upgrade to a better GPU later, you don't also have to buy a brand new power supply. Now cases are interesting. So this one is fine. It's a computer case. I chose it because it's dirt cheap. It's $56 and it also comes with fans in it, which means you already have something uh, to provide you some airflow. I don't think it's the prettiest case. And personally, since I'm kind of a snob, I like pretty cases. So if you want to spend a little more and get a pretty case, this is the one that I think is kind of cool. This is the Lan Lee A3 uh, mini a ATX case. And this has, this actually steals the design from one of my favorite case makers, Fractal. Uh, it has the wooden slats on the front for, you know, air cooling, air can kind of go through the vents in the front. This case does not come with any fans. So you're probably gonna wanna budget another 40 or 50 bucks for a few fans to put in this as well. And this is just my opinion, but this sort of case just looks way nicer even if you don't like the wood finish they have versions that don't have wood on the front and last but not least the most expensive component of most computers today we're looking at the gpu we're going to go with the same geforce rtx 4060 that that mini pc that i reviewed the other day has this is 300 by itself anytime that a computer has its own gpu it drives up the price now if we wanted to stop here we could totally do that we could not buy a GPU and we would have a perfectly functional computer that would cost us like $650, $660. And price-wise, this is about the same performance that you would get in a mini PC if you just bought an all-in-one there. But like I said, once you get to this $500 and $600 mark, it just makes sense to kind of build your own instead of going with a mini PC because you start to get more value in that modularity and you could just do your own thing and you could add your own graphics card. So when we add this all up, what do we have our mini PC for? We got this this for $948.39, which means we have saved about $750 over the price of that mini 
uh, Mega Mini G1. Now there are a few areas where I did cut some things because I felt like that Mega Mini G1 was overkill in a couple ways. First of all, we got that Ryzen 5 processor, which is gonna be more inexpensive and not as powerful as the Intel i9 in the Mega Mini, but that's because I just felt like for what we're doing, that processor was overkill. We were paying for performance we're never gonna use. I would personally rather take my money and put it in a GPU. And even if you wanted to get a better processor in there, I wouldn't go all the way to the tippy top. I'd probably go with a Ryzen 7 or something like that. That $80 jump is just gonna do more for it. There are some other areas that they're cutting in on. For example, our SSD drive, our M.2 storage isn't as fast as the storage that they're using there. I don't believe our RAM is quite as fast is the storage they're using there. But honestly, we, our RAM is plenty fast and our storage, anytime you get M.2 storage, it's fast enough where you're not really gonna notice the difference. So when you put your entire studio together, kind of on that higher end, what will it cost you? About $1,300. That is a lot of money but you're getting a computer that's gonna last you a long time that you can also upgrade in the future, that's modular. And if that is too much, I still think something like this is actually still pretty good deal there. You're not losing that much. You're not gonna be able to use it as much for gaming or 3D rendering or some of those higher end tasks, but it's gonna be just fine for art and you're gonna get by and it's more than enough. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.